Mac Jones. What is up, everybody? My name is Advance, and this is Advance Sports Talk. So, man, we had we had some interesting primetime games, to say the least. Oh, man. So, let's get into this. Starting off with the New England Patriots versus the Atlanta Falcons. And I got to say, this has been the first time that I saw the Falcons get beat like this at home. Like, even during even during uh, the days of Michael Vick's return, <laughs> wasn't this bad, man. At least then they put up a fight. But, oh, man. Patriots ended up stomping the Falcons 25 to 0. Man, and that's crazy because um, the stats wasn't even all that. It was one touchdown by Nelson Aguilar. Everything else was field goals. And then it was a pick by a pick at the end by Kyle Van Noy. So oh man. So <laughs> Mac Jones overall stats. 22 for 26, 207 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Interception did not affect him, obviously. Oh, man. Matt Ryan, 19 for 28, 153 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. Oh, man. Matty Ice is thawed severely. Uh, let's see. Nelson Aguilar. The, uh, the the solo touchdown recipient <laughs> caught five out of five targets for 40 yards. Russell Gage, five out of eight targets for 49 yards. Oh, let's see. Let me go to the, the actual receiving stats. Yeah, it looks like the receiving was pretty much was pretty much spread out. Uh, let's see. Kendrick Bourne had 42 yards. Nelson Aguilar had 40. Jacoby Myers had 39. So, yeah, um, Hunter Henry had two receptions for 25 yards. So, yeah, it was a bit even out. <laughs> Evened out. Oh, man. Ramondre Stevenson. I might have to look him up for, uh, for fantasy. 12 carries for 69 yards. Damian Harris. 10 carries for 56 yards. Not bad. Man, yeah, so on the Falcons side, uh, poor little Russell Gage, he was the only one really, him and Kyle Pitts was the ones that was really worth a shit. Uh, Gage had five receptions for 49 yards. Pitts had three receptions for 29 yards. So we had no Calvin Ridley, no Cordero Patterson. You know, man, yeah, that, that really... That really hurt their um, hurt their offense, but we'll see what happens in the week to come. The weeks weeks to come. I don't got the Falcons making it. Next, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Los Angeles Chargers, and Matt, <laughs> this was a good game. It was a um actually LA was dominating the game up until the fourth quarter. Then I guess Ben tried to go whatever the NFL equivalent of Super Saiyan was and just started slinging the ball all over the place, man. And, oh man, they scored um so they ended up tying the game. They ended up going ahead by three. <laughs> but oh lo and behold, Justin Herbert. You can't give Justin Herbert the ball back with over a minute left. Like, oh, man. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get the exact time. I'm sorry. They kicked a field goal with three with three and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Justin Herbert looked at that was like, looked at my wrist. I got time today. Man, <laughs> throwing a 53-yard bomb to Mike Williams. Oh, man. Welcome back to the league. Welcome back to the season, Mike. <laughs> Who caught five out of six receptions for 97 yards. Half of that, as I just said, was 
was that was that that touchdown pass. Deontay Johnson caught seven out of thirteen targets for 101 yards. Austin Eckler, eleven carries for 50 yards. Now you know those aren't his true his true stats. Najee Harris held for the um he's held for all time low since the beginning of the season. Twelve carries for 39 yards. All right, let's uh let's check these uh these other stats. There we go. Austin Eckler, six receptions for 65 yards. Mike Williams, five receptions for 97 yards. Keenan Allen, nine receptions for 112 yards. Man, they cooking, cooking. Justin Herbert, nine nine carries for 90 yards. Man, yeah, he was scrambling all over the place. Man, quarterback, <laughs> quarterback leading the um, leading the, leading his team in rushing. He took a page out of uh, Lamar and Jalen's book. Oh man, but Falcons in trouble. I hope they in a um they're in a rebuilding phase. I'm sorry. Yeah, Steelers, man. Oh no, Deontay Johnson. Chase Claypool, five receptions for 93 yards. Yeah, and then everybody else. Alright, so we're gonna get into these uh the quarterback stats. I didn't do that first. Hold on. Um, Big Ben, 28 for 44, 273 yards and three touchdowns. Quarterback rating, 103.7. Justin Herbert, 30 for 41 for 382 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Quarterback rating, 116. Oh, no, 116.1. Yeah, like, man, <laughs> Justin, that, that, Performance from Justin Herbert helped me out in both fantasy leagues that I was in. So, oh man, hats off to you, my dude. Now, last and most certainly not least, we're going to talk about the New York Giants versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And starting off, I felt like I was in a bit of a rerun. You know, like, cause last year, you know, I was, we was going into the half and I'm like, why is the game this close? The game should not be this close. And then third quarter happened. Bucks took off, man. Uh, <laughs> finally, 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 man. But, oh man, Tom Brady, 30 for 46, 307 yards, two touchdowns, quarterback rating 89.7. That's uh, that's not good. Now, I don't know what's happening in their passing game, but Brady, if Brady's not overthrowing, he's hitting receivers in their hands and they're dropping it. So they're either dropping it or they're smacking it up in the air, causing interceptions. Not cool. But luckily, yeah, I'm, I mean, it's, it's not cool. Luckily, we still managed to pull out the win. And... We was able to keep our foot on the gas, keep our foot on their necks, and ultimately pull out the victory. Um, but yes, man, Saquon's uh, first game back, six carries for 25 yards. Uh, yeah, the Giants didn't really, couldn't really do too much of anything. Uh, they had, uh, let's, let's see, Tony, Tony had 40. Slayton had 37 you know, receiving. I'm t- going over receiver stats. Barkley had 31 yards receiving. Rudolph had 28 yards receiving. Yeah, we pretty much kept them mostly in check. Now, I know what everybody's going to say. It's the Giants. But no, like, remember what I said before. There is no more guaranteed wins. There are challenging games and games that you can win or that you should win. Just because you should win doesn't necessarily mean that you will. If the Bucks didn't show up with the proper um, mindset to take this game seriously, they could have lost because <laughs> there, there was a, there was an interception, there was a there was a blocked punt, like yeah, there was plenty of things that the Giants did that under normal circumstances would have got them back in the game. But oh man, in any case, Buccaneers beat the Giants thirty to ten. 
Alright, so that's it for all the primetime games. So I did Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night football. And <laughs> oh man. So Thursday, we got we got the Thanksgiving, uh Thanksgiving games. You know, we got um we got Dallas and Detroit who plays. Well they don't play each other, but they all they play every Thanksgiving. How that is, I have no idea, but <laughs> all right, so we got the Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions. Then we got the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Dallas Cowboys. And then at the for the nighttime game, we got the Buffalo Bills versus the New Orleans Saints. That could be a good game, depending on if um if Alvin Kamara is actually back. Actually, I don't know what the Saints receiver situation looked like. And I think the Bills are itching for a win. Well, at least one that's not. Hold on. Let me. I think they, they did win last week, right? Hmm. Yeah. The Bills are itching for a win. Because, uh, yeah, they lost to the Colts on Sunday. But in any case, that was it for this breakdown of the primetime games. I will see y'all on Friday. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe on everything. I'm out. <laughs>